Hi, I'm Lara. And I'm David. Welcome to the Fix It in Photoshop series of video shorts. This video is a beginner's guide covering all the ways you can customize Photoshop's interface to tailor it for your own workflow. Let's jump straight in. If you want to change the overall look of Photoshop, head up to the application bar and select Photoshop Settings Interface on a Mac or Edit Preferences on a PC. From the pop-up window, you can then select from the four preset colors available to you. Preview them by left-clicking on the color icon. Then when you find the one that you prefer, just click OK to commit the change. The rich tooltips included by Adobe are great if you are just starting with Photoshop, but they can soon become a distraction once you know your way around. The good news is that you can opt to switch them off. To do this, head up to the application bar and select Photoshop Preferences Tools on a Mac or Edit Preferences Tools on a PC. Near the top of the pop-up window is a radio button labeled Show Rich Tooltips. Untick that radio button and click OK to commit the change. Photoshop comes preloaded with a set of workspace views in different use case scenarios. Each of these contains the tools and panel layout which are optimized for each of the use cases. You access these by heading to the application bar and selecting Window Workspace. Then, just select a use case from the list which suits what you are doing. Note, if you are working on an image and start moving panels around or things just start to look messed up, then head up to the workspace and reselect your favored use case. This forces all the panels to default back their saved configuration. Photoshop gives you the flexibility to customize what tools you want to appear in the tool panel, which panels appear in the panels tab area, and you can even go ahead and edit which options appear by default in the application bar. You can then save all these settings as a custom workspace view. To customize the tools, head up to the application bar and select Edit Toolbar. The column to the left named Toolbar represents the tools currently in your tool panel, together with how they are grouped. The column on the right named Extra Tools represents all the other tools that are available to you. To add a tool to the tool panel, drag it from the Extra Tools column to the Toolbar column. Notice also that you don't even need to have tools grouped in the default Photoshop settings. So for instance, if you wanted the Dodge Tool and Burn Tool to appear separately instead of grouped, then you can do this by separating them in the toolbar instead of stacked together. If you want to remove a particular tool from the tool panel, click and drag it from the toolbar column and into the extra tools column. Once you're happy, click done to commit the change. To customize the panels, head up to the application bar and select window. From the list of available panels, the ones that are displayed are highlighted with a tick. You can switch them on or off simply by clicking on them with your mouse. Tools you select are added to the right-hand panel. You can also right-click on any of the tools in the panel and select Close Tab Group to remove them from the panel area. If there is a tool that you use frequently from the right-hand panel, you can have it appear as a permanent tool in the tabs area of the panel by clicking it and dragging it onto one of the panels. Likewise, you can choose to remove a tool from the panel tabs by clicking and dragging it back. You may even decide that you want a particular tool to float on your workspace by clicking it and dragging it into your workspace area. If you don't want to see all of the options in the application bar, then you don't have to. I tend to leave mine at its default because the menu bar is sitting at the top of the screen anyway. But the point is, the choice is there for you if you want to use it. To do this, head back up to the application bar and edit. Menus. From there, you can eliminate any menu items you don't want to see by selecting the item and then unchecking the eye icon. So for instance, if I didn't want the undo, redo, and toggle items to appear in the application bar, then I would just uncheck them like this. I'm going to go ahead and put them back though. Then you press OK to commit the change. Now that you have tailored your workspace to suit your preferences and workflow, you can save your settings as a preset so that it is always available to you whenever you open Photoshop. Head back up to the application bar and select Window, Workspace, New Workspace. Give your workspace a name. Then, make sure to check the radio button options to save tool layout and menu layout and click Save to commit the change. Your custom workspace will now always be available to you as a preset directly from the application bar.
Photoshop has more than 30 panels. Each panel is a miniature workspace dedicated to performing a specific task. The most frequently used panels appear in the main panels area as a set of tabs. So for instance, the Layers tab is central in much of what photographers do in Photoshop, hence sits prominently in the panel. Behind this tab, you will find Channels and Paths tabs. As well as all the tabs in the main panel's window, there is slither of icons to the left of the panel's area. Selecting any of these opens up the respective workspace for that panel. At the top right of the main panel's area is a small icon like two little arrows pointing to the left. Clicking this will toggle between expanding the panels or collapsing them. Guides are a useful tool when you need to align elements of your image, or if you are creating layouts. To access guides, you first need to make sure rulers are visible. Toggle rulers on or off using Command-R on a Mac or Control-R on a PC. You can also use the application bar and view rulers. To make a vertical guide, click and drag from the ruler at the left-hand side of the document window onto your image. Likewise, to make a horizontal guide, click and drag from the ruler at the top of the document window onto your image. You can move any of the guides around by clicking and dragging them. To delete a guide, drag it from your image and back onto the ruler. To change the color of the document window, right-click outside of your image and then select from the list of colors available. The default colors are quite neutral, but if you want something brighter, then just select the custom color option and use the color picker to select whatever color you fancy. For a completely clean interface like the one here, you can just press the tab key, which is a full screen view including the application bar. Press tab again to return to the standard view. You can also achieve the same through the application bar by selecting view in screen mode. You are then presented with a third option to display a completely full screen mode without the application bar visible. There is also a rather useful fourth mode which is accessed using shift tab. This collapses the panel's view into icons so that you maximize your screen space and can keep working with the tool panel. Just press tab again to get you back to the standard view. When you open multiple documents in Photoshop, the default configuration is for each to appear as a selectable tab along the top of the document window. But if you want them all to appear at once, then head up to the application bar and select Window and Arrange. Now select from the modes available to you. To get back to the default mode, go back to the application bar and select Window Arrange Consolidate All to Tabs. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you want to see more like this, it really helps the channel.